Well, with me now are two campaigners who've been at the heart of the global opposition movement uh, to bring Joseph Kabila down. Uh, Okito Tongoma from the Congolese Support Group and Vava Tampa from Save the Congo organization. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Um, there have been quite a few demonstrations in London. Um, have there been similar protests in Kinshasa? Thank you very much. Yeah, there has been similar protests in Kinshasa, but we understand that people in Kinshasa are having some difficulty to come out because the regime has a using excessive level of the force to stop people from expressing their freedom. So have they been, I mean, Vava, you've been following this for us over the last few weeks. A security build-up around Kinshasa, lots of police checkpoints. Kinshasa effectively in lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but despite um, the heavy presence of militaries as well as police officers in the capital, uh, people still managed to come out. So there were uh, pockets of protests across the capital. One of the opposition leaders, Jung, uh, Frank Jongo, has been arrested by Republican Guard, who are President Kabila's on private military forces. So people are still protesting, and across the country, people have been protesting. In Butembu, I have been told, just on my way here, 13 people are be, have been killed. Um, in Goma, around 50 people have been arrested. In Kananga, in Bujimai, in Lubumbashi, all of those places, they have been arrested. Up to present, they were still compiling information right. in terms of how many people have been killed, how many people have been arrested, how many people have been kidnapped. So the picture is still not clear enough. Yeah, of course, for us, um, from our point of view, those are unverified figures that you're Certainly. citing there. We will do our best whilst we're on air to try and verify those figures. But, Mr. Uh, Okito, um, the truth is that there is really nothing the opposition can do to dislodge President Kabila. I mean, if you go out on the streets, you'll meet the full force of the police and the army. You see, extremely, uh, that's something I want to mention in a different way. Uh, the opposition has got the right at the moment asking Mr. Kabila to go because at the moment we're going through a very peaceful process where we are asking him to respect the value of the Constitution. But let me tell you something. According to Article 64 of our country constitution, is, the Constitution is giving power to any very Congolese citizen to fail any citizen who try to take power by force. So by using this article, we can use any mean of the force to stop anyone who try to take the power by force. Kabila at the moment is, has lost legitimacy and become illegal president in the Congo. And where we've got a history in the country where we see small, different small rebel group and a different type of army group taking, try to, to, to over to take Mr. Kabila by force. So I was speaking that the opposition is using a peaceful strategy. Right. It's like a gift for Mr. Kabila to understand that we try to have a, a very peaceful way to have a very legitimate government at the moment because he has a cause a chaotic for the history of our country. He, he was in a position to organize election. According to Article 68 of our constitution, he was a leading in the country. He should organize the, the election. He was a leading all the institutions of the country. He failed completely to organize any manner of the election in the Congo at the moment. All no, the institutions are illegal. Right. So, Practically speaking, Vava, I yeah. mean, it would take a long time to organize elections, wouldn't it? I mean, the electoral roll is not updated. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't exist. I mean, how can you have free and fair elections under those that circumstances? We, we are in this situation because the government in place has refused to update those electoral roll. Now, to organize an election, we actually have the means and we have done the maps. We know we can organize an election over the next seven months. The opposition, how some which unifies all the opposition, actually puts the date of the election in September of 2017. So we do have the means. We know how we can do it. We've done it twice already okay, over so, the so, past 10 right. years. So, so even if elections can be organized in three months' time or seven months, as you say, can Mr. Kabila stay in power as a caretaker Absolutely president? Not. What do you think? No, but that is really jeopardizing the value of the freedom in our country and the respect of the Constitution. Mr. Kabila cannot stay in power at the moment. He's the person who has caused all the chaotic situation we're going through at the moment. We need to have a stable nation where somebody has to take the power to organize the election. He had a fail to organize the election. we got history where Mr. Kabila has been in power for the past 15 years, and we see a small group of rebel taking the power by force. We see people being killed as a result of his weakness. It's essentially so, a dynasty, isn't it? I mean, you've got father and son taking over. Um, and 
mean, it, and, and the Sun has said that opposition supporters like yourselves in the DRC aren't loyal Congolese. How does that well, make you feel? It's actually worse than a dynasty. This is a kleptocracy where you have it a rule by a group of people essentially trying to make themselves rich and Mr. Kabila and, and his families and friends have amassed hundreds of millions over the past 15 years and the reason the chief reason Mr. Kabila doesn't want to give power is because of those money and what we are now calling what we are now pushing because Mr. Kabila one way or the other is going to be pushed out he cannot defy the Congolese people we have taken down Leopold II. We ended um, Joseph Mobutu's 32 years of dictatorship. Uh, he, he, he doesn't rise up to those men right. and, and figures. And what we are now pushing is for the EU and the US essentially to impose life-changing sanctions. Those are sanctions which, are, which will target Mr. Kabila himself, target his family and their fortune. And as soon as those are imposed, we would be on our way to pushing Mr. Kabila out. Right. Okay, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, in practical terms, he has power. He has the practical power in terms of the loyalty of the army. Where does that leave you the opposition beyond the rhetoric that we're hearing here, given that he's digging his heels in. Who do you look to to bring change? He mentioned the international community. Mr. Kabila has ignored international pressure. It's a completely good question. I, I really appreciate that because we have a history where Mr. Kabila, since he became in power, he was not elected by Congolese uh, as we predicted him to be. He had been there because he was supported by the international community. And we see some serious abusive and a very aggressive language mm. from Mr. Kabila where he tried to be seriously intimidating to the international community and also abusing Congolese people even when people are expressing themselves, asking for freedom and requesting the respect of the constitution. Let me tell you something something which Kabila probably doesn't even know at the moment. The constitution is giving Congolese power to, to remove anyone taking power by force. But at the moment, Kabila has got no any argument to stand against that one. We can use any different strategy of the power, any mean of strategy to take him out of the power. Because at the moment, Mr. Kabila cannot lead the Congo at the moment. Okay. He is a completely a dangerous person for the stability of the Congo and the future of our country. Let me just reiterate that we're hearing unconfirmed reports that speak of multiple deaths in the DRC as protesters take to the streets uh, this evening. We will be hoping to confirm those reports uh, by the end of the program, certainly by the end of the evening. Vava Tampa and Okito Tongoma, thank you very much indeed.